Let's talk about mixes. Uh, I think there are a lot of tutorials out there describing how to set up particular mixes on your RC transmitter. Uh, but I, I, at least when I started learning this stuff, had trouble finding descriptions of you know what mixes are and how they work. And they're not really that complicated, um, but I bet there's a lot of people out there who would like to know more about mixes than they do. So I'm going to give a try at explaining them. And I hope you like it. So let's start with your inputs. <clears throat> your inputs are your sticks, right? You've got these simulated sticks here. Your left stick, your right stick. You've got your uh, your pots on the this is the Turner G nine X simulator. You've got your pots, and you've got your switches. And these inputs, uh, you can think of them as going from minus one hundred to one hundred. So if we look down here. Uh, X 0%. When the input is centered, it's at 0. When it goes all the way left, it's at minus 100. When it goes all the way right, it's at positive 100. The same is true for the pots. And in fact, we can even think of the switches as being the same way. A switch could be off at minus 100 and on, it could be a positive 100, right? So all of your inputs go from minus 100 to 100. And when you set up your radio's mode, mode 1, mode 2, etc., you tell the controller what control is going to be on your sticks. So here we've got a mode 2 controller. So my throttle is the y-axis on the left. My rudder is the x-axis on the left. And the aileron is the x-axis on the right. And the elevator is the y-axis on the right. So here we've got rudder, elevator, throttle, and aileron. Those are our four sort of main inputs. A good way to think of mixing or the mixer is that it's something that sits in between your input and your output and tells the radio what to output to the receiver uh, given what you've selected as an input. So if we go over here to the outputs uh, display, you can see that channel 1, if I move the stick 100% to the left, channel 1 goes... 100% uh, to the left. So channel 1 is at minus 100, the stick is at minus 100. And if we go all the way to the right, channel 1 is at plus 100, the stick is at plus 100. And that's the same is true for, for other channels like, uh, like ailerons here on channel 4, elevator, and so on. And that's being controlled by these mixes. And these are very basic mix. Uh, even a controller, a non-computerized controller, could be thought of as having this sort of very basic mix. So what do we got here? Um, we've got channel 1. Channel 1 is going to take its input from the rudder input, and that's set up here on the left stick, x-axis. And 100% of the rudder input is going to go out on channel 1. And that's what we saw. And the same is true for channels 2, 3, and 4, elevator, throttle, and aileron. So just at the beginning here, you can see that if you wanted, for some reason, to change the channel that a given uh, control was on, you could do that right here by moving this, this, this configuration option. So I can hold down Menu, and I can select the source for channel 1. Here it's Rudder. But I could set that to whatever I want. Okay. Now let's think about how this, this uh, weight works. It's, if it's set to 100, 100% of the output goes out on that channel. And if I change that, like for example, if I set that to 50, I overshot, sorry. If we go, again go to the outputs and look at channel 1, we can see that now when, when the stick is 100% to the left, so it's at negative 100, channel 1 is only at negative 50. So essentially, the output is 50% of the input. Uh, and what we've done here is the equivalent of if you have a radio that has adjustable throws, where you can reduce the distance that the servo travels uh, to make, say, say you've got an aircraft that's got big control surfaces and it's really twitchy, and you reduce the throws or you have dual rates. Uh, that, that causes it to become less twitchy, right, and more controllable. 
Well, it's the same thing as we've done here. We've we've taken 100% of the input and mapped it to 50% of the output. Uh, and and by the way, this this radio uh, does have a setting for adjusting the throws and doing dual rates separate from the mixes. But I just want to demonstrate that you can accomplish the same thing in the mixes if you want to. So what happens then if we take this number and we make it negative? Now what we're doing is the same thing with the uh, with with the rates and the weight, but we're moving it the other way. So if we again look at the outputs, look at channel one. Now when I move the control to negative 100, channel one goes to positive 100. So essentially what we've done here is we've reversed the direction of the servo. And that might be a useful thing to do if you have um, a servo that's mounted, but it's flipped the wrong way for some reason. Uh, so, so it's moving the control surface the wrong way, right? Some con uh, controllers will have an option to invert a channel, and it's just an on-off option. Here we can do that by setting the mix from positive 100 to minus 100. And of course, if we set it to minus 50, the same thing will happen. It'll just be 50% output uh, opposite direction. What do you think would happen if we set this to zero? Look at channel one. And you can see that it just stays at zero. Nothing happens. So we've essentially neutralized that channel. And I don't know why you would want to do that. You probably wouldn't, but there you go. So let's do something interesting. Um, let's say that you wanted to mix some rudder in with your aileron. Uh, some aircraft don't turn very well just with the ailerons. And so when you put aileron input, you decide that you also want to put some rudder input in. What we're going to do is we're going to go to the rudder channel and we're going to single click the menu button and that'll highlight that channel. And then I'm going to press to the right and that will insert a new mix. So let me just exit out real quick. You can see now we've got two mixes on that channel, right? So you can have multiple mixes on the channel and the mixes can add together. Uh, if there's a negative weight here that can subtract from each other, cancel each other out, replace each other. There's all these interactions that the mixes that are on a given channel can have. Like in this case, I just created the new mix and it's just a duplicate of the old mix. And if you look, we see that when we get an input on the rudder, we're going to add 100% of that input to the output channel. And then we're going to add another 100%. So now what we've done is you'll look that when I move the rudder, notice that now when the stick gets to 50%, the output is at 100%. So now the output is double what the stick is. So this is kind of similar to inverse expo, but, but not exactly. We've basically made the channel way more responsive. Of course, we've also got half the stick movement that just doesn't do anything, right? It's just between 50 and 100% of the stick movement is just wasted. So again, this is the kind of thing that you, you probably wouldn't want to ever do in real life. Uh, but but just to sort of understand where we're coming from with the mixes. So let's go back to that rudder mix. I'm going to hold down the menu key. What we're going to do is we're going to say onto channel one, which is the rudder, the source for this mix is going to be the aileron control. And if we think about the weight, the weight starts at 100. And what that means is that when we have full left aileron, we're also going to have full left rudder. And if you think about it, that's probably not what you want. If, if, if your aircraft is like mine, if you go full left aileron and full left rudder, it's going to whip around in a circle and probably end up in the ground. So what let's do is we'll go back there and we'll uh, reduce that weight. And let's say we reduce that down to, oh, I overshot again. It was a little faster than I thought. <laughs> let's say we reduce that down to 20%. So now the rudder is going to move the same direction as the aileron because that's a positive number. And it's going to take 20% of the aileron input and mix it down to the rudder channel. Let's take a look at what that does. So now, when the aileron is 100% hard over to the left, the rudder is 20% to the left. And, and it's important to understand that we still have control with the rudder input, right? 
we can still use the stick to manipulate the rudder, but whatever the, the rudder is doing, it's going to be 20% to the left. Or, so here I've got the rudder hard to the right, but it's only outputting, if you look at channel 1, hang on, it's only outputting 80. And when I neutralize the aileron, now the rudder's back at 100. And again, the input will never move past 100%. So if the rudder is hard to the right, and I move the aileron to the right, sorry, notice that the rudder has, it stayed at 100. But that extra 20% is still being added in here. The rudder is metaphorically at 120, but it don't, the servo will only go to 100. So notice that as I move the rudder back, the output stays at 100 until the rudder gets to 80, and then it starts to drop. That's that extra 20% that's being added in because of the aileron channel. So we've mixed the aileron into the rudder at 20%. That's an example of, of some mixing you might do, uh, theoretically. Um, let's take another example. Uh, let's imagine that you've got an aircraft, uh, a, a two-engine aircraft, and you want to do differential thrust. Differential thrust is where you've got uh, two engines, and when you want to yaw the aircraft, one of the engines can be made to pull harder than the other one, so that the air, that, that helps yaw the aircraft. Um, it's useful uh, when you're maneuvering on the ground, uh, especially if you don't have a steerable tailwheel, um, and it's useful for doing some pretty crazy stuff in the air, you know, flat spins and so forth, if you have really powerful engines. So let's think that one through. The first thing you're going to need to do if you're going to do something like that is you're going to need to have your engines or, or your control surfaces or whatever it is you're trying to mix on separate channels. One way to set up a dual engine system is to have a Y splitter on your lead coming out of your receiver and uh, just run both engines off the same uh, same output, output channel. But if you do that, you can't control the engines separately. They're always going to be set to the same output level. So what we're going to do is we're going to have channel 3 be the throttle. But then we're also going to go down, let's, I've got an 8-channel receiver. Let's take channel 8, and we'll put the source for channel 8 be the throttle as well. Okay? So now, if we look at our outputs, watch channel 3 and channel 8, and you'll see that they move together. So now we've got a, a working dual engine setup. Didn't have to use a Y splitter cable. We just used two, use an unused output on your receiver, and the engines will spool up and spool down together. Okay? Fine. Now, how do we accomplish differential thrust? Well, differential thrust is usually uh, controlled by the rudder input, because the rudder controls yaw, and differential thrust controls yaw. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the throttle channel. We're going to single-click Menu and press to the right to add a new mix. The source for the mix is going to be the rudder. And we'll think about the weight here. If the weight was 100, then when the throttle, uh, when the rudder was hard over to the left, the left engine would be fully off and the right engine would be fully on, and, when the, uh, and vice versa. That's probably not what we want. We probably always want the engines pulling us forward at least a little bit. And, and we're just going to have them drop their thrust some percentage uh, to accomplish the differential thrust. So let's just start with something like maybe 25%. What that means is that the engine will get 25% weaker when we, when we turn toward the engine. It'll get 25% stronger when we turn away from the engine. Uh, and we can tweak that later if, depending on the flight characteristics, what the experience we have when the model is actually in the air. So we're going to mix the rudder into channel 3, 25%. There you go. And likewise, we're going to need to go down to channel 8, which is our other engine. We'll hit Menu, and to the right. And we will mix the rudder into channel 8. And we're going to need to do this minus 25%. Because we want these engines working up opposite to each other. When one of them's pulling, we want the other one pushing. And when the other one's pulling, we want this one pull, uh, push, pulling, the opposite, whatever I said. And we want them working opposite to each other. So if both of them 
were set to plus 25, then when we turn left, both of them would get stronger. And when we turned right, both of them would get weaker. That's not what we want. We just basically have created a, a secondary throttle on the rudder. What we want is when we turn left, one gets stronger and the other gets weaker and vice versa. So let's watch now our throttle on channel three and eight. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the throttle at 50%. So now our throttle's at 50% and we're cruising. And now watch what happens when I move the rudder. When I move the rudder hard to the left, channel three gets weaker by 20% and channel eight gets stronger by 20%. When I move the throttle hard to the right, channel three gets stronger by 20% and channel eight gets weaker by 20%. So if you think about it, it's gonna be real important which motor you have on channel three and channel eight. I've moved to the left, channel three has gotten weaker. That means that channel three needs to be the left motor and channel eight needs to be the right motor because that will accomplish the same yawing as moving the rudder to the left. If we get that backwards, the, the engines are gonna be pulling contrary to the rudder and who knows what's gonna happen. The best thing that'll happen is that your plane will just fly in a straight line. And the worst thing that'll happen is something bad. Okay, so there you go. We've set up differential thrust. Uh, another example of something you might do with mixing is to mix a constant value into the control surfaces. And this is going to be the last example here. Um, to mix a constant value in, an example of when you might want to do that is if you're setting up uh, some kind of spoilers. So for example, let's say you've got your ailerons on separate control channels so that they can be controlled independently. And what you want to do is when you're getting ready to land, or sometimes gliders will do this uh, if they're gonna if they want to lose airspeed, the ailerons will both go up an equal amount. And they're still usable as control surfaces, but they'll both go up and stick above the wing into the airstream to kind of slow the aircraft down, create extra drag. So here's, here's how we might do that. The first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to control our ailerons separately. So here in the default setup, both ailerons are on channel 4, and they're using a Y splitter to control them. And that means that, that they're always going to move the same as each other. Uh, the servos are going to be flipped so that they move opposite each other. But basically, whenever one goes up, the other is going to go down. In the default configuration, there's no way to make them both go up. So the first thing we need to do is we need to get our ailerons onto separate channels. So let's say that the left aileron is going to be on channel 4. And let's go to channel 7 and say that the right aileron is going to be on channel 7. So we're going to say, we're going to put that aileron on channel 7. And let's assume that the servos are set up so that the ailerons move opposite of each other. And what that means is that we can leave this weight at 100. If the servos were set up as, and were not flipped opposite directions, then we would want one of these channels to be at 100 and one to be at minus 100 so that the control surface is moved opposite of each other. But you can, you can accomplish the same thing by just flipping one servo over, and most aileron setups are set up that way. So in other words, in this scenario, with aileron input on channel four and seven at 100%, we're gonna get the de desired uh, control surface output for standard ailerons. Now, how do we accomplish the spoilers? I'm gonna click menu one time, and then over to the right, and what I'm going to do is my source, in this case, is not going to be any particular control input. What I want to do is I just want to make the ailerons stick up 5 or 10%, however much I decide is right. I don't, I don't care about where the sticks are. I just want the ailerons to stick up an extra 5 or 6 per 10%. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to max. And what max does as a source is it basically just lets you put in a constant number based on the weight. So let's say source is max and weight is, let's say 10%. That's actually, 10% is actually quite a lot of, of spoiler, uh, but whatever, who cares, it's not a real aircraft. So when this condition is met, we're gonna get 10% uh, uh, additional on channel four. 
And now let's go to channel 7, which is our other aileron. And we're going to hit menu once and over to the right. Go to max and weight 10%. We want those to be the same because if, if the ailerons stick up a different amount, then it'll, it'll induce yaw. And that's not what we want. We just want them to stick up into the airstream and slow the aircraft down. Oh, whoops. I've... Uh, Oh, no, I've done it. I hit a uh, button and screwed up. Hold on. Delete that. Aileron, select to the right. Input is max, and weight is 10. Okay. Now, now notice that both of these mixes are bold, which means they are currently active. And if we look at our outputs, notice that both ailerons are up 10%. So our spoilers are active. Notice that when the spoilers are active, I can still steer the aircraft using the ailerons. The aileron control still works. It's just 10% more upwards than it would be. Okay. But how do I make it so that that is controllable by some switch, for example? One way to do that is to go to the mix. Let's go to our channel 4 mix. And to put that mix on a switch. So here is the switch setting. If I put that mix on, let's say I put it on the aileron uh, switch. And I'm going to want to also do that for the channel 7 one. Otherwise, one of them is going to go up and the other isn't. Let's go down to switch. I'll put that on the aileron switch. Now, notice that the mix is not active at the moment. But if I go and I flick the aileron switch, the mix becomes active. And again, if we look at the outputs, the spoilers are up. Look at channel 4 and 7. I flip the switch. Now they go back down. Right. The other way to do that same thing in uh, in Open 9x anyway is to use what are called flight modes. So Open 9x has what they call flight modes, where you can switch between flight modes uh, using the three position switch. And what you can do, for example, is uh, you know flight mode one is cruising, flight mode two is takeoff, flight mode three is landing. And you can set up different trims and so forth. And so another way to accomplish a, the same thing is to go to those mixes. And here's channel four. Here's our spoiler mix. If you look here, I can determine which flight mode that mix is going to be active in. So we can see here, if I take the switch and disable the switch, now it's always going to be active. But then I can decide that I don't want it active in flight mode 0 or 1, only want it active in flight mode 2, 3, and 4. Let's go do the same thing for channel 7. So let's turn off the switch and let's uh, set it so it's only active in 2, 3, and 4. So now uh, if we go back to the outputs, you can see here we are in mode zero. If I go to mode one, oh, hold on. I need to tell the controller that the three position switch is controlling the flight modes. Hang on. If I go to flight mode one, yeah. So we're going to say ID one is flight mode one. That's, that's the middle position on the three position switch. And ID two is position uh, is position two the lower position on the three position switch. So now, if I go to ID two, notice that that becomes active because that's one of the modes that we said that the mix should be active in. So that's two ways of of associating a mix with a switch. One way of associating a mix with a switch is to link the mix with a flight mode and then link the flight mode to a switch. And the other other way to do it. is to link the mix itself to a switch. 
right here. And those two things work together. Both of these conditions have to be true for the mix to become active. So I could say in flight mode one, the aileron switch causes spoilers. And in flight mode zero, the aileron switch causes dual rates, for example. So it can get as complicated as you want. But what I want you to take away from this is that the mixing is, it's just saying take X percent of this input and add it to this other channel. Or as we saw in the case of the, of the spoiler ailerons, we can also add a constant amount to a channel. In other words, make the ailerons go up 10% and stay there and just and still handle control inputs, but just whatever they're doing, they're up 10% from what they were. Okay? Well, I hope you, uh, you feel a little more confident about programming mixes. And uh, good luck. Happy flying.